far, the time has been relatively kind to Lakdar Balumi. The hair's a little greyer, for sure, but his general appearance has changed little since 1982, when the then African Player of the Year helped tournament debutante Algeria make a huge impression on the 12th FIFA World Cup in Spain. Our participation in the Africa Cup of Nations in 1980 and 1982 had given us some valuable experience at international level before heading to Spain. Playing in the World Cup is the realization of every footballer's dream. It's the pinnacle of any career. In their opening group encounter, Algeria, one of Africa's two representatives in the tournament, faced the mighty West Germany in Hihon. After a goalless first half, Algeria surprised everyone by taking the lead in the 54th minute when Balumi's shot was parried into the path of Rabah Madja. Karl-Heinz Rummenigge brought West Germany level, but within a minute, the Africans were back in front, courtesy of Balumi. Our second goal was excellent. The build-up consisted of ten passes, and the eleventh and final one involved me stroking the ball into the back of the net. It was a thing of beauty. That goal was a team effort. The ball was worked down the left by four or five players, and I always say that the whole team scored with me. Algeria held on for a 2-1 victory, only the second by an African nation at a FIFA World Cup. The players milked the moment in El Moninon, and with good reason, having been ridiculed previously in West Germany, almost from the moment the draw for the finals had been made. We weren't too happy about some of the comments coming from the German camp. We took on board what they said about beating us by seven goals. One of the players said he was going to score a goal for his son and another for his wife. They spoke about dedicating goals to pet dogs and so on. Someone even talked about playing with a cigar and a smoking jacket. Those comments spurred us on and gave us the motivation to beat them. We took the game to West Germany and, thank God, we won. Five days later, in Oviedo, Algeria were beaten 2-0 by Austria, for whom first Walter Schachner and then the prolific Hans Krankel were on target. Our tiredness showed against Austria and dictated our approach to the game. Unlike West Germany, the Austrians had done their homework. Instead of goading us about the margin of victory, they studied our game and devised a plan to beat Algeria. After just two days' rest, Algeria returned for their final group game against Chile. Balumi was on the bench, but his teammates dominated the first half, racing into a 3-0 lead with two goals from Salah Assad and this effort from Tej Mansoula. Whilst that game finished 3-2, the following day back in Gijon, West Germany and Austria engineered a result that saw those two nations progress on goal difference at the expense of Algeria. We did everything that was asked of us, and our efforts should have paid dividends. We amassed four points, just like West Germany and Austria. But their game was an embarrassment. Everyone knows it. They've admitted to it in Germany since then, and it's now consigned to the history books. Balumi, who's now 49, featured in all three of Algeria's games at the 1986 FIFA World Cup, where a draw with Northern Ireland was all they had to show for their efforts. In that tournament, for the very first time, there were simultaneous kickoffs for the final round of group games, and that would be Algeria's legacy from their outstanding exploits in 82. We played an important role at that World Cup. We demonstrated to African teams and Arab countries in general just what can be achieved with the right amount of effort, commitment and preparation. 
1982, Algeria provided a blueprint for other smaller nations to follow. Baloumi turned down offers from some of Europe's leading clubs after the 82 tournament. After a spell in Qatar, he returned to Algeria, where, like his teammates, he remains a hero to millions.